All right, when we do get uh, our bones on the back of the helmet, it's uh, something that we did when we first got here to Georgia. I know Coach uh, Dooley at one time, I believe he put stars uh, on the helmets, or he had some type of decal. Uh, I know at Florida State we had the Tomahawks, and I think the players do enjoy having some type of uh, award system on for their helmets. And the bones looked about as good as anything. So the white bones are, are on the field related uh, awards. Um, an offensive player might get it for scoring a touchdown or throwing a touchdown pass, or if a lineman has enough knockdowns, he might get a bone, or if the entire unit scores in a one minute drill, they might get a bone. Uh, there's kicking team bones for exceptional play. I mean, Brian Mims on a 77 yard punt, I'm certain that'll. Uh, earn at least one bone for that and uh, so our special teamers get them and then defensively of course you get them by making a big hit or or getting a sack or a fumble recovery or something like that so uh, that's what the white bones are for and then the black bones are designed uh, to reward uh, outstanding academic work whether it's a an A on a test or a paper or a project or um, sometimes we can give it to someone for a community service uh, project or award winner for a community service uh, award and uh, so we give them for mostly academics uh, that's what the black bones are for you'll see more white than black because you really can't earn as many uh, black bones in the week's time as you can uh, on the field but uh, they're both very important to the players and they they really enjoy it Well, I hear there's a difference in the heat. Uh, I've been told by some people that play in the NFL that uh, the teams that go to Tempe, um, you know, early in the year tend to lay an egg out there. And they say the heat is a little bit different. It's very dry, and um, it is, it's hotter. So, um, you know, we're just going to have to see how much of a difference it is. The latest forecast I've seen is uh, somewhere in the high 90s which is actually pretty good compared to some of the 105, 112 degree, you know, 112 degree temperatures we've seen. We're not going to really do anything different. We're not going to go a day early. We're not going to go the day of the game. We're going to go our normal routine and kind of treat it like it's an 8 o'clock game. I'm not even sure we'll, we'll change our own clocks. We might stay on uh, our own time zone as far as our thoughts are concerned and just uh, think of it as a, as a night game and, and uh, hopefully we'll handle it well. Well, I think the clock rules certainly are shortening our game again. Uh, when a guy runs out of bounds, the clock has not stopped. Uh, it stopped for a short time, but just enough to set the ball in play, and then it starts again. Where It used to be if a guy went out of bounds, then the clock wouldn't start until the ball was snapped. So that's a difference of maybe 15 seconds every time the ball goes out of bounds. So that's a big difference, a big change. Uh, you know, usually when there's less plays, that that's advantage to the defense. But... There is one time where it's an advantage to the offense, and that's if the offense is trying to kill the clock at the end of a game. Uh, you can literally get probably uh, an extra five or ten seconds every play that you're trying to milk that clock at the end of a ball game. And the reason for that is in the past, yeah, let's say you uh, let's say you just took a knee on first down, and there's no timeouts for the other opponent. Well, second down, uh, the, you know, the official would just grab the ball, reset the ball, and wind a 25-second clock. That might take him five or, or ten seconds. So uh, now you're only going to be able to chew up maybe 30, 35 seconds. But on a 40-second clock, as soon as that plays over, you you know you're going to be able to grind 40 out of there. Now, you know, last week against South Carolina, we had a little problem in that the, their 40-second clocks weren't working properly. And we had to go by the back judge's uh, hand signal. So it was very difficult to milk that uh, clock right down to the very one second like you could if you could see a 40-second clock. But uh, on a normal game, uh, you'd certainly be able to uh, grind more clock at the end of a ball game. Well, we did blitz a good bit, but uh, not as much as I know the fans would like uh, all the time. I will say this, when we have a ball game where we only give up seven points. Uh, I don't care how we did it. That's a fantastic uh, effort by the defense. But um, I'm sure everybody's looking for pressure on the quarterback, and we are too. And 
and we're not quite getting as much pressure as we'd like on these four-man rushes. Uh, so we, we are going to have to create more pressure, whether it's through twisting maybe a little bit more, you know, different stunts uh, up there with the front four, or we're just going to flat out have to br bring more people. And uh, if we do, we can do it in, a, in such a way where we bring five guys and play some zone coverage behind it. Uh, you still can play some man coverage with a five-man rush with a, with a, a safety deep. Or just go to a six-man rush where we just let it all hang out and play everybody man-to-man, -man and and then we better we better hit the quarterback quicker. They're going to have uh, some big plays against us. So, you know, there's advantages and disadvantages uh, of blitzing. We just got to make sure we do it uh, at the right times. And and when we do it, we we must get pressure to uh, not allow that quarterback to stand back there and and throw against some uh, zones that have too many holes in them and the man covers that don't have any help back on the back end. Well, A.J.'s proven that he can make plays, uh, and he's proven that he can make plays in big games. That was a big game uh, for us, our first Southeastern Conference game, a great defense. And if anybody's going to have a personal issue uh, as far as getting excited about a game, you would think playing his home state team uh, would get him a little bit riled up and maybe take him off his game. But he handled all those situations well. As a matter of fact, he played uh, superb when, when the ball was thrown to him. So uh, should we get the ball more to him? Yes, I think, we'll, I think you'll see us taking more shots to him. Uh, you know, we don't want to just build the entire game plan around that, but uh, when a guy starts becoming as productive as A.J. has been to this point, he deserves more opportunities. Well, Mims punted that thing. Uh, it ended up being a 77-yard punt. It was just an amazing punt and not only was it amazing uh, in fact it went 77 yards it was it was just so crucial at that moment of, of the game we uh, just had a wonderful goal line stand and offense didn't do much with it actually lost some yardage and we're thinking uh, you know if they, I'm sure they're thinking if they get any kind of return they're going to get the ball on uh, our side of the 50 and uh, so you know a lot was riding on that kick and he not only gets a high deep kick where we can cover it but uh he booms it over the head of uh, Captain Munnellin, and uh, and uh, you know he can't even get a return out of it. We had a, we we punted at 770 yards. We punted at 77 yards, got 77 net yards, and uh, it forced that uh, South Carolina offense to go on the long field. Now the, that was not a record. It it seemed like a record, but uh, the record was Don Golden, 80 yards in 1973, I believe it was against Kentucky. Well, we have some uh, leeway in the scheduling, and I do get involved in the scheduling. This this game in particular against Arizona State that's coming up, uh, basically what we did when the 12th game was added to everyone's schedule, everybody was looking for games at the same time, and that helped uh, everybody uh, add some exciting matchups. Uh, we decided we were going to play a BCS team. We decided we wanted to play one outside of our region, southeast region, so that's why we're playing the Colorado Oklahoma State, Arizona State teams, and uh, you know, so I have had some input in that. Uh, the Southeastern Conference, they they make the schedule uh, for our Southeastern Conference games, and we don't have a lot of say uh, on these games. We we can hope and actually uh, submit a request for an open date uh, prior to certain opponents, but we never have a guarantee of getting it. So this this year in particular. Uh, we've got one before Tennessee and one before Georgia Tech. Um, uh, you know, next year we have one prior to the Florida game. And, and so we're, we're hoping to have an open date prior to an Eastern Division foe. That, that's the goal. And uh, starting last year, uh, I think we're going to be on a cycle where we'll be able to do that.